Welcome to the digital version of the Electric Propulsion and Plasma Dynamics Lab, where we have worked on plasma propulsion for spacecraft since 1962. I'm Will, and this is the first of four videos I've made summarizing the projects I've worked on here at Princeton. This video focuses on the facility renovations, namely restoring the large steel vacuum facility. Because we work on propulsion for spacecraft, we need to simulate space-like conditions. We accomplish this using large vacuum chambers to remove all the air from the vicinity of the thruster. I work with the MPD facility, which is a steel chamber roughly 1.5 by 4 meters long. When I first arrived, we couldn't get low enough pressures to get reliable measurements from our thruster. So fellow grad student Mike Hepler and I invested a significant effort in locating the sources of the deficiencies and then eliminating them. It was a bit of an art to find all the minor leaks that contributed to this problem, but in our search we ended up finding a number of issues with the existing setup. To start with, the water cooling feed-throughs all went through a bottom port cover, which, when operated at atmospheric pressure, resulted in condensation forming on the inside. We frequently use lithium propellant, which means that some of the leftover propellant in the form of lithium hydroxide then formed a concentrated solution near the o-ring on that plate and caused galvanic corrosion of the aluminum. If it's not smooth, you can't form a seal, so we went ahead and made a new one. While we were tearing out the existing cooling system anyway, I also went ahead and replaced the old closed-loop cooling system with an open-loop system. One of my main research objectives requires measuring small changes in thrust, and the closed-loop cooling system meant that temperatures kept rising over the course of an experiment, resulting in thermal expansion near our thrust measurement system. So switching to an open-loop system was crucial in mitigating those unwanted effects to get a reliable thrust measurement. The vacuum tank makes a 90 degree turn at the end and goes down into the basement where our pumps are located. We found that one of our mechanical pumps had a broken spring that was needed to form an airtight seal. Since I had to open it up anyway, I completely disassembled the pump and rebuilt it. Not only did that fix the leak, but it's substantially quieter, which means there's less vibration in my thrust measurements. Our diffusion pump was also not pumping out air as fast as it should have been, which I found was due to a low water flow issue, which I then resolved with an acid flush. After fixing the leaks and repairing the pumps, and cleaning and re-greasing every seal on the thing, I can now operate around 5 times 10 to the minus 5 tor while running with argon propellant and at lower pressures with lithium propellant since it just solidifies on the walls. That's about 5 millipascal or a hundred millionth of an atmosphere which is better than good enough for my purposes. Leaks weren't the only problem though. One of the top port covers directly over the thruster looked like Swiss cheese with all the feed-throughs in it. It carries more than 30,000 watts of power through it, it's immediately over our 2000 centigrade thruster, and has 15 pounds per square inch pushing on it. So we thought maybe a material stronger and more heat resistant than acrylic would be appropriate. We instead made Swiss cheese out of G10 fiberglass, which is substantially stronger and still electrically insulating. We also made custom feed-throughs and replaced all the cabling and gas lines. We also found a lot of legacy cabling in and on and around the tank. I found at least 50 cables that didn't do anything, and I'm sure Mike found more. We got rid of them, did some cable maintenance, and along with undergraduate researcher Nick Lusaraga, stripped off the exterior rust and gave the tank a fresh coat of paint while we were at it. I'm skipping a lot of the problems we found early on, and I'm not even mentioning the vacuum issues related to the glove box, which we need for handling our lithium propellant. At this point in time, we hadn't even fired our thruster yet. We just achieved the ability to safely pump down to near vacuum. That's it for the first video. The next video will be focused on the thruster I research, as well as the thrust measurement system I designed and constructed.